All right, so here we are. We've got kind of a unique build that we want to throw together today. Um, sometimes when the AR market is completely saturated like it is right now, cooler and unique is, is better. So Aero Precision put out this new battle-worn nickel Teflon um, builder sets, and they're really cool. Um, nickel Teflon is not a joke. I mean, it's a serious expense when you go to do this. Years ago, I had my Sun Devil receivers coated in nickel Teflon, and you know they were 200 plus dollars more than a regular set. So Arrow came out with these cool ones with the little Atlas guy right here. And they've got a nickel Teflon undercoating with a Cerakote over the top and then they kind of rub it a little bit and do that whole distressed battle worn thing. Unlike some of those ones out there that are a little bit flaunty, this one just has a cool look to it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take and build a relatively lightweight. We're going to be using the Battle Arms fluted 10 and a half inch 5.56 barrel. And what's going to be unique about this gun, aside from this $400 barrel, is that we're going to be running the superlative piston drive system on this little guy. A little 6.25 lightweight um, piston drive system. I don't know, people are not really spending a lot of money on these little things right here, but it's not a whole lot more than a nice gun because this system already comes with a bolt carrier group, or not a bolt carrier group, but a, a carrier, and you just throw your bolt in there. So I've got a BCM bolt that we tossed into this carrier with an uh, Fail Zero XO coated firing pin moves like butter inside there, so we're going to get this thing done and hopefully we'll get out and shoot it in the next uh, week or so um, with this little uh, suppressor we did a video on the other day. Anyway, so to get started, when I do a build, I always want to grease up the barrel extension a little bit just because this thing right here is a serviceable part at some point if you shoot it hard enough you're going to want to take this out and replace the barrel. Or if you get tired of 5.56 and you've got to have that 300 blackout, then this is a great way to do it. So this is going to be nice and tight too. It goes in here like this, nice and snug into there. So we should get some pretty decent accuracy out of this sucker as well. Every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. And on the first torque of this thing, between 40 and 50, we find ourselves one of the slots on top lines up perfectly with the... Oh my gosh, this is awesome, Jeff. Look at that, dead center. All right, so we just found out that the superlative arms piston system does not jive with the Atlas rail. The off-rod was binding on the barrel nut and the piston housing was binding on the inside of top of the rail right here um, for that. I'm gonna walk over here and see if you can see just inside here on the top. If you look, you can see that there's only a place for the gas block um, right down here at the end. And you can see how the saddle on here dips down in there and doesn't leave us a cutaway for anything more than the gas tube right, and right along that. So with this particular Atlas system, you're stuck to a low pro gas block and you know certainly probably not even a clamp on is gonna work. There's so little area underneath here. So let's go ahead and install our gas tube in the gas block. These little gas, gas tube pin, roll pin holders are pretty amazing. You actually crush it in there and you know, that's not going to come out. It's, it's actually compressing the pin ever so slightly when we do this. Every once in a while we get a gun build that comes in here where they take this gas tube and they put it in like this where it's upside down and all sorts of weird things happen. So you want to make sure you have yourself a nice uh, straight setup. What I'm doing right now is I'm visually eyeballing the hole and then I'll softly set it on the table. And line that little sucker up. flush. So everyone should know that the gas tube tends to rise up right here so that when we slide it onto the onto the barrel over here everything goes in the happy mode. One of the best things I ever did was buy a T-handle um, Allen wrench for these gas 
block screws. I bent a lot of the other ones and this one has a tendency to give a little bit for us. So before we torque everything down here, just because of the difficulty I've already had, we're going to slide this rail over and just do a test fit to make sure everything's happy, and it is. So yeah, that gas block pops right up in the top right here, the last little bit of the cutaway. So very, very specific to what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. What we're going to do now is we're going to remove these uh, little set screws in the bottom of the gas block, and we're going to do a little bit of degreasing. I'm a big fan of, you can see all the residue that's coming off of this thing right here. And if you're going to red Loctite these things, it's not going to stick if they're all oily. And then same concept with this and my, uh, my barrel. This is a serviceable part and if you don't have some kind of potential little bit of lube right here going over onto the the saddle for the gas block or the seat for the gas block. You could potentially have something that's hard to get off and I've seen this before where it takes a lot of hammering, hammer time to, to get those things off of there. So now when this goes on, we're sliding on a little bit of lube. Oh, a lot of lube, look at that. And then if you look really closely right here, you'll see this barrel has a dimple in it, which is great. And I won't try and show you down inside there, but like you can actually see the dimple. The screw goes down lower than the surface of the barrel. It's all but impossible for this thing to move um, during a firing schedule. Well, let's take one of our uh, set screws. And we're gonna line up the dimple first Guys, it doesn't need two drops of red Loctite to do this. And the last thing we need is for this thing to be permanently affixed to the gun forever. It's hard enough to get it off. So when I put this in here, once it kind of touches, you kind of want to get that to center. See how it backed off of the shoulder just like a 32nd of an inch or a 64th of an inch? If I push that all the way and then I tighten it down, you know, weird things are going to happen. So I'm, I'm vertical. And then what I like to do is give it a couple of clicks and give it a little bit of a seat. Now that one is locating it. This one's not quite as important, but same concept. A little teeny dab of red. Wipe off any little bit of excess so we don't have it squirting out of here. And then we work this one in. One, two, three. It allows a lot of flex on the actual shaft of the Allen wrench. And I've never had one come apart in eight or nine years. I've never had a loose um, gas tubes or gas block screw when I do this. So now that that's on, we're ready to install the rail. The uh, Aero Precision Atlas rail is super, super cool. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of this guy, the way that it mounts. With all the silly clamping ones that are on the market today, this one is very unique. It uses a little cross pin and then two little locking nubs that slide in there. So, that being said, let's start this out a little bit. It's got a left-handed side and a right-handed side. And if you're me, you're obviously trying to put the left-handed side in the right-handed side and that doesn't bode well. So you get one side started just a half a thread comes with this little guy and as you tighten it, it pulls these two little things together in a perfectly flush fit. You can't see it from the camera angle but right here there's a little detent that's popping in and out as we go um, clicking. We give that a nice little snug. Look at that, perfectly smooth, low drag, nothing. A far cry from the old ones that you're clamping down with three screws in here that stuck out on the bottom super neat. One drawback to this rail is that it only works on mil-spec type receivers. 
it will not work on like a billet, a typical billet receiver. So what I'm gonna show you is one more thing. This is kind of interesting. This is the new Q Honey Badger. And it's eerily similar to what we have right here, if you look at it. Only it uses a tensioning device that goes the opposite way and pulls against two different layers with the same anti-rotation on the receiver. Um, modern stuff has come a long way and these are these are super cool you have a continuous rail you can't even tell where there's a gap same thing on the honey badger so kudos to aero precision for stepping it up and innovating i'm not sure who came up with this first if it was q or if it was aero precision these have been on the market for a good year now shipping and these are brand new this year so cool stuff all right so we started this off as a piston build and it failed because of the, the way that the rail fits on here. So we switched over to a DSG MP3 volt carry group. We might as well do MP3 on MP3, right? Lubeless, super cool. Got a little bit of uh, grease left over here from the, the gas block. I'm just gonna put a, a surface dab on here, just on the wear parts. It could be commando cool and say, you don't need any lube on that. It's perfectly lubeless, but I'm not gonna do that. This build's gonna get a Radian Raptor LT charging handle. Um, they make this LT version with the polymer lugs, and I'll be danged if these aren't like 65 bucks, you know, just a couple dollars more than the, than the BCM Gunfighter one that I've been using for years and years, and it's got the ambi features where it runs both ways. One thing I like to do on these, in the upper as well, a little bit of stuff in the so it slides on the groove in there same thing this is a nice upper it probably doesn't need a lot of extra stuff like this but why have something wearing the bearings inside of a car motor are perfectly smooth way beyond what a gun is and they run oil oil on all those things You know, I don't know if, if this is real or not, but after using headspace gauges for a while, when you lock this up, I can usually see the smallest little five or eight thousand movement of the bolt inside the barrel lugs that when you put it around in the chamber, that disappears. I'm not saying I can headspace by, by eyeballs, but in building all these things, thousands of these things, I found that if I have that tiny little bit of play right there, it works really good. If it goes in really tight and locks up, then we have a problem. You're not going to be able to chamber around. It's going to be all tight. Bad news. And of course, we're using a Battle Arms barrel that's top tier. We're using a, a advanced bolt from, from DSG that's got the nice little lugs on it and the anti-tilt on the back of it as well. So that's the upper receiver. Um, one of the things that we're going to do with this gun is we're going to attempt to run this Wit machine and tool canuter valve suppressor. I did a video on this. They're claiming there's no blowback into the receiver. They did some shooting. They showed a picture of the magazine with a tan follower in it and hardly any residue on it at all. Do I believe that? After doing suppressed shooting for so long and seeing the filthy magazines that come out of it, you know, that's a tough one for me to swallow, but we're going to give it a shot. Look at this beautiful guy. Battle arm showing out the bottom. We got a little battle arm logo on each side of the thing. A little bit of silver on the suppressor. But that's a tiny little, uh, tiny little package. So let's set this aside and move to the lower receiver. All right, let's put this lower together uh, and make this happen. Some of the parts we're going to use in this is a velocity trigger, a little three and a half pound drop in. Um, nice and smooth, great little feel to it. We're going to use a battle arm safety. Um, the badass the selector they call it. I'm not sure why they're, well I know why, it's a gun thing, you understand. Um, I got Strike Industries pins. I really like the Strike pins because they provide um, a little bit of extra grippage when you're pulling things out and there's a place for your finger to go underneath and grab it. So we'll put those in as we go. 
So let's go ahead and get started. The first time on every gun is you want to put in the mag catch because otherwise it interferes with the, the bolt catch function. This is a Strike Industries guy. Um, just a little bit unique. They're relatively cheap. Um, and they make, a, they make a gun look good. Once again, a little, little light coating on there. And then for this gun, we're going to be using the Seekins um, paddle, bolt catch, and mag release button. So they kind of match up a little bit, give a little bit of style on this guy. So a couple of turns like this, and then you can depress that into the, uh, into the thing. I like to pull from this side and I stick my finger in there. And then with these closed end ones, you rotate it around and it's going to stop right there. I can't go any further, I'll punch a hole in it. Back it, back it up and drop it in. Nice, smooth, I like this nickel Teflon. Nice, smooth setup with that guy. And then our bolt catch detent. Right over here, I got a little dab of, uh, of grease on here. No sense in having everything all dry, so we'll lube it up a little bit. Drop that in the hole. And then another nice feature of their new M4E1 receivers is the threaded um, roll pin for the, the catch. Nice little touch that they've, they've given us. So we're not trying to pound things in there. I don't know how many of these things that I've scarred driving this in with a, with a punch, but I'll also say that if you don't have a ball end on your on your Allen, you have a, you have a greater chance of uh, making a scratch right here on the receiver as you put this little guy in. All right, so we've got a good functioning release there, a good functioning release there. So now we're going to switch to the mag block and we're going to go ahead and work on dropping in the fire control group. So velocity trigger first up. Um, one of the things that I didn't think about until just now was what kind of pins am I going to use in this thing. Are we going to go for the glam and put some KNS pins in it or are we just going to use some stockers? And I think we'll just use some uh, nitride stock pins because this has the set screws on the bottom that press against the lower and pull it up. Um, against the tension on the pins and hopefully those things won't walk out on us. With the drop-in trigger you've got to put the trigger in the lower before you put the selector in. You know with the mill spec ones you can do you can put this in after but you've got to do this beforehand otherwise you're in trouble because um, it, it won't come out it's bound inside there, so there we go. We've got our two uh, nitride pins here for the for the trigger. Everything pop out right there. And that one right there will keep it nice and clean. Sometimes a part of me wants to put a, a set of KNS pins on this thing, but I don't think that's necessary with this one. Like I said, the Timney and this guy right here have these two little screws in the bottom that when you tighten them down, they pull that trigger housing up against the, the pins nice and snug. Not only that, but the trickiest part of these builds is these two little guys right here, there's two little set screws that go on top of those ones. And trying to get these things without having that screw drop in the in the receiver, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a tiny little dab of grease on the end of my Allen wrench and I'll provide some like suction on there so that when I take this guy on the vertical and go down to the housing, it won't fall off and drop inside the, the receiver. Same concept with this, nice little snug, and we're good to go. This is always a good point to test your trigger, make sure nothing's binding. 
got a nice crisp feel to it. Nice plated uh, hammer, should work very well with all the other plated stuff in this gun. It'd be a nice smooth operator. So next up would be the rear, rear takedown detent and the rear takedown pin. So same concept with this that we use everywhere else. That's going to be sliding in and out of here for a long time and generally speaking this part doesn't come out very often when you're servicing the gun. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of grease in there. Stick it through. Take our D10 and feed it in the back of the receiver. And then chase that with one of the springs. That should get a nice, nice amount of crush. Sometimes I'll clip a coil off this or two if I've got a, a poorly made detent or some of the mil spec ones that are bulk made there's a sharp edge in there and it, it's tight this one feels nice and smooth on full pressure so we're gonna go with that let's uh, install the right side of the selector while we're at this point this selector is called the crank I kind of fall in love with it because your finger your finger kind of pivots on that thing when you run you run it. It's nice. I'm not getting any detent clicks right now because the grip's not on. But let's put the, the butt stock on there. All right, so here we go. We're going to put the uh, buffer catch detent in there. Once again, we want a little bit of grease down inside there. And we want just a little bit on this guy sliding up and down inside the receiver as well. I've seen some where this hole is binding, it's not sliding up nice and down, up nice and down. Sliding up and down with style inside there. And it's usually on the super cheap receivers that are usually less than $75. I forgot to mention, this is the SB Tactical pistol stabilizing brace um, and it gives you the nice collapsing setup. So this is not a short one so this will this one will utilize a standard buffer and a standard spring it's the seven inch long setup right here just like a normal tube would be but it still collapses down all the way and it gives you the brace option um, for this particular setup. One of my favorite build tools has got to be this Magpul um, wrench with these lugs on here. They're nice and big and wide. They engage deep down into these things. I've probably destroyed two or three of the standard standard units. I'm not sure if this one, let's try it. It works this way, but on the regular capsule nuts, I can rotate it like this and go over the top. I'm kind of rubbing on the body of the, of the suppressor, so we're going to go back and just run it this way. You want to put a ton of torque on this because you're twisting this little section right here and the whole receiver. That's probably part of the reason why they stake the uh, they stake the castle nuts. On this particular one, I'm not sure where I would go to stake this. There's not really a cutaway or a detent in there. So I'm going to go with a nice snug torque down and we're just going to leave it at that. This is a three position, so it'll run all the way closed, out one, and out all the way. Generally speaking, this is gonna go all the way back and you're gonna rock it from right here. Some guys are gonna want a little red, run a red dot up here and keep it as compact as possible, but we're gonna set it up that way. Um, concept over here, a lot of guys, you know, they don't want any stuff inside here as far as the grease and the lube goes, but a little light coating on the spring right there help with, with stuff quiet. The new Maxim Defense butt stocks have the option of a JP captured spring and they're nice and quiet when you run those. It's also 450 bucks and you start pushing the boundaries of a $2,000 gun when you do JP springs and Maxim butt stocks and hot rod triggers and all these little parts that we're doing. So let's go ahead, we're going to install the BCM Gunfighter Grip Mod 1. The Mod 1 is a little bit more vertical down here since we've got a short length of pull. 
um, a nice drive to it. I've said this before, but the traditional M4 grips, they have like a cant like this and it gives you like a, a bent wrist. This one gives you a little bit of relief so you got more of a direct push on the gun and less of this stuff right here. So let's install that. BCM is traditional, they're mil spec to the max. They ship their grips with the standard slot screw, which is fine. You can, anyone has one of those things in the field. Magpul came along several years ago and they, they issued a hex or an allen key with a slot in it and a nice wide flange on it. And ever since these came out, I've always shuddered about having to put one of these in there and watching your screwdriver slip on and off. This is just so cool because you can just put it on there, stuff it up in there, and it, it holds on there pretty good. So I've already preloaded the, uh, the selector tunnel with a little bit of grease on it. So when that goes up inside there, it's going to be riding on grease as you, as you mess with the selector. So let's go ahead and take the spring, stick it on there. Slide this up in there and let's take our screw. And you close it up, you'll watch the gap close right here at the top between the grip and the thing and the receiver. Oh, that's a beautiful, nice little snug fit on this receiver. I do like it. Now my favorite part of all these builds is the front takedown pin. There's all kinds of tools and things that you can use for that to rock and roll it, but we are going to take a little bit of that grease, wipe it on that pin. And the trick to this is making sure this thing doesn't go boing. I've sold dozens of detents um, out there for these guys. What I've learned over the years, if you look at my fingernail, if that sticks out a lot, sometimes it puts a little bit too much pressure on the actual, um, on the actual detent. So what I'll do is I'll take that guy and I'll grab my little clippers and I'll just take like those two coils that were sticking out, they're gone. And then I, I always put the cut end down inside like this so I got a nice flat OEM end that sticks on the, uh, on the thing. So that's perfectly flush with that hole and I found that works out well. Ironically, of all the ones I've ever done, there's always like an eighth or three sixteenths inch difference in the depth of that hole or the length of the springs or something like that. So that's one way to provide consistency. Now with my handy dandy father's fingernails, I can take this little guy stuck it in there I can hold it down and I just chase it with this put a flash at the flat up against there and I let that thing pop out and stabilize it boom done so there you go a lot of times these take five or six little whistles just to round off some edges but that one just glides effortlessly the rear one same thing in and out just perfect All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. The upper and the lower. Done. So there you have it, an Aero Precision build loaded with really cool, nice guts, fantastic barrel, and a little PW piston stock, or pistol stock brace. You might as well call it a stock these days. But it's got a place for a sling a swivel to pop into if you want to sling this guy up. The Atlas rail comes with sling ports right here for a two-point sling. Let me grab a magazine. We're going to do a magazine test on this thing and a couple of function checks and let's see how things play out. All right, we're going to go do the uh, quick little function check. Super loud in your ears. Very nice. So it should be a great shooter. 
uh, some point here in the next little while let's try and get this thing out to the desert and uh, we'll run this suppressor we'll take a traditional uh, size suppressor maybe we'll do some sound comparisons with the camera far enough away where you can tell the difference between a lot of times they get so close and the cameras just cut out the microphones they just don't do it this gun um, I didn't totally add everything up but the receiver sets about 500 bucks for the three pieces which is a lot for an arrow precision and the dang barrel is 400 bucks from from battle arms and then you're looking at another three here so this is probably 15 to 1700 bucks the way we have it set up um, without the suppressor we got a nice charging handle we got an ambi selector um, got a hot trigger in it nice bolt carrier group so very very nice little gun amazing shooter and uh, one more gun down <laughs>